proud to start a special project that looks to find and showcase true beauty, inner beauty. Tonight we meet our first beautiful woman. Kirsten Keeley is here with the big reveal. Here she is, our first beautiful woman, Debbie Fowler, who quickly taught us the beauty of laughter. This truly has been an incredible project. that my friend would think enough of me to want to nominate me. That was very humbling and very flattering. But it was like, I don't take myself seriously. And it's like, seriously? <laughs> when my girlfriend called and said she needed a, a picture because she had submitted me for your contest, I thought, oh, Kathy, <laughs> what did you do? There's so many more deserving, so beautiful me. women. Oh, man. And okay. so when she said, I need a picture. And so that's why I sent her my clown picture. So I go, well, I can be beautiful as a clown, you know. And then I really didn't think anything more of it until I found out I was one of the three finalists. And then I thought, oh my gosh. And so I really started thinking more about it. And, and I'm thinking, you know what? In a small little way, if this helps promote the art of clowning and what clowning is about and how, you know, that, you know, you, I was so complimented that the whole committee took clowning seriously as an art form and that, you know, that I was respected as an individual with this you know and not just some goofball and and so I thought you know what this oh, is really cool. that was, is my son Kidder and he uh, is his real name's Kenny and he's the one that had brain cancer and he clowns with me and when he can oh and, I didn't know that yeah, he's special needs he's he um, the radiation that treated the cancer caused brain damage but um, he's just so he functions well you know, like a 10 year old and he's just a wonderful clown and oh. and in so most you know functions that his schedule he's involved in Special Olympics and he's um, real busy so when his schedule permits then he clowns with me Do my you time here on earth you know I was supposed to be here to help with my son and his kids you know he lost his wife she died last year and so my husband and I helped you know my son and take care of his kids and we still um, they lived with us a little over a year, and then now he has, is trying it as a single father, but we still take the kids as often as we can. Oh, you know, no matter how bad a person has it, somebody has it worse. And no matter whatever I think of all the bad things that have happened in our life, you know, good things have come out of it. And, you know, when uh, I would never want wish cancer on anyone. I mean, that is a horrible thing to, to have to go through. Um, but we felt the love and, and the support of so many people. I mean, total strangers would send us letters and, you know, come over and, and just, you know, it was people who'd been there. Um, a couple years ago, I had a brain aneurysm and, and they found it and it was, you know, I was so lucky because oftentimes, you know, you don't know you have a brain aneurysm until it's too late, but I had a twitch in this eye and it was kind of intense and so I mentioned it to the doctor and they did an MRI and they found it and they did um, open brain surgery and clipped the aneurysm and I'm just fine they dropped out a few brain cells <laughs> but other than that <laughs> most people you know they just don't take clowning seriously like why would you want to be a clown but you know it's to spread laughter and cheer and make people happy once my nobody wears rainbow wigs <laughs> you know <laughs> only scary clowns and I, I hate what the media has done as far as portraying clowns as evil and and demented and you know it's it's not but at that's all. Why we had I've always been a goofball. You know, I've always my youngest brother and I we try to one up each other all the time, and um, just always silly. And hey, you want me to play a little tune? Uh. <laughs> 
Oh, I lost my harmonica. We're supposed to play a little tuna. I, I never thought about being a clown. You know, this is what I want to be. I worked in an office for 25 years. I was a secretary and an executive assistant and never, you know, ever thought that this is what something I'd ever want to be. And, and it was, it just kind of happened. You know, I just, but I just, I've always loved to be the, the goofball that makes somebody laugh. I love to be laughed, you know. Before I was a clown, people said you'd like to, you know, be the center of attention kind of thing, but it was more just trying to get people to laugh, you know. Oh, you're so Do you need a Kleenex? Anybody here need a Kleenex? I just happen to have a Kleenex in my pocket. If you need one, here's a Kleenex. Just let me clean it a little better. A Kleenex! What do you want people to learn from your inability? Um, that just be yourself and just, you know, what you do can affect other people in so many different ways. When I was just a little girl, somebody told me, the, the grocery man in our little town, we, I grew up in Hickson, and he said, you have a pretty smile. You know, I always wanted to smile after he said that. When he told me I had a pretty smile, I just it made me want to smile. So it's like, what we say to others can have such an impact in what we do. It's. You know, I don't know, I, the word beautiful to me, you know, is, like I say, it's, it's awkward to say that, but I, I, I like inner beauty, I like that, and I hope to have that inner beauty, I want that, that's what I work for, to try to be a nice person, and, and you know, that, that, that to me is just being what we all should strive to be, is just nice people, <laughs> you know, and to be, care about one another, and wouldn't this world be great if everybody just cared about one another?